Google Drawing is a completely free and easy to use tool that you can use to create your infographics. It does not have any pre-made templates that you can customize. However, you can look at infographic templates in Google Images to get some ideas from. I did a Google image search for infographic templates to get some ideas. Notice how infographics use a common color palette, tend to fill the entire canvas with color, and use similarly styled images or icons. Here's a nice one that I can easily recreate in Google Drawing. To get started, go to your drive, choose New, and then More, and then Google Drawings. The first step is setting your canvas size. Go to File, Page Setup, and use the drop down menu to choose custom. The standard size of a piece of paper is 8.5 by 11 inches, portrait, or 11 by 8.5 inches if you want landscape orientation. If you will not be printing your infographics but rather using them in an electronic presentation, there is no need to use common paper sizes. In fact, you'll see that many infographics are wider, like this one, and taller, like this one than a traditional piece of paper because they are shared digitally. So you can really adjust and readjust your canvas however you like. Google Drawings does autosave, but title it to make it easier to find later. To adjust the background color of your canvas, right click on the canvas and choose background. I'll choose white, even though I plan to layer several different colors on top. Just make sure not to leave the transparent default background. It does not view nicely on a screen. I'm going to move my inspiration template next to my Google Drawings canvas so you can see how I can copy the elements. Now I will use the shapes tool to create the different blocks of color you see on the template I am copying. Most of the blocks on this template are just simple rectangles, but the shape tool has many options available. I have a rectangle added for the header text block and now I need to adjust the color by selecting the fill tool. I don't quite see the turquoise color I am looking for, so I will choose Custom and use the adjustment tools to get it just right. Once you create a custom color, Google will add it to your recently used colors, which makes it easy to keep a consistent color palette. I also want to remove this black border that's around the rectangle box, so I'll select the Line Color tool and change it to Transparent. Let me use the rectangle tool to add in the section dividers too. You can either reselect the rectangle tool and draw from scratch again, or select one of your existing rectangles, copy and paste it, and readjust the size and orientation. This template has some layered rectangles of different shapes and colors to add some more visual interest, and I will do the same by adding rectangles that are filled with a lighter shade of blue or turquoise. And finally, I'll use the half frame shape tool to enhance the corners of my infographic and I will use the same custom color to fill it. Okay, let me show you some quick tips to create shaded titles and graphics like those you see on this template. First, the title. Drawings has a lot of existing fonts and you can easily add more. Use the text box tool and add your text. Use the tools on the toolbar to adjust size and color. I am looking for a more blocky font, so I will change this. If you don't see a font you like, just choose more fonts and you can add them by clicking the title of the font you would like added to your drive. To add a shadow effect, just copy and paste the text box. Change the color of one of the text boxes to gray. And arrange it just slightly to the right of the other text and then right click. Use the order option to send it backward until it is behind the white text, which will create a shadow effect. Shapes and ordering were used to create the triangle graphics you see here. Let me create several triangles and I will fill them with different colors. To arrange order, I just need to right click, use the order, send back, bring to front, send backward, all of those options until I get them in just the right order. You can bring in images from Google Images just by left clicking on an image and dragging it, dropping it into your canvas or a simple copy and paste works as well. If you click on the image and choose Image Options, you can recolor the image to better fit your color scheme. And of course, I can use circles or arrows to call attention to locations on this map. If you choose Custom when you're on the Fill Tool menu, you can adjust the transparency of the fill as well so that the map or image underneath the circle is more visible. 
When searching for images, avoid images with a background color. I will show you how to remove white and other solid color backgrounds at the very end of this video in a tool called Pixlr. But removing a photographic background is more trouble often than it's worth. Google does make it very easy to crop an image though. Just add it to your canvas, double click until you see the black outline lines and use those black lines to adjust it. Hit enter to apply the crop. Now let's explore how to create and integrate graphs. Google Sheets will create a wide variety of graphs for you. I've entered some data into this spreadsheet from a table that showed the different types of computers Jeffco Schools purchased in 2013 and 2016. I'll select the data and then choose More to find the Chart button. Based on my data, Google has recommended a circle chart for me, but I will click the Chart Types tab to see what else I have available. I really like this version of the pie chart, so I'll choose that. But I get a message that my selected data has too many columns. So I'll read the directions in this message, click Cancel, and then reselect only the first two columns. That looks really good, but I will choose the Customization tab to adjust colors, fonts, and labels. I plan on adding my own labels on my infographic, so I'm going to remove them from the view here. Choose Insert when your graphic looks the way you want. From here, you can copy and paste into your drawing. If you choose to link your chart to the spreadsheet, it will automatically update if you happen to change the values in the data chart. And I'm going to crop and resize my graph. If you think that you're going to need a little more canvas area, you can go back into page setup to add more height or width. You can multiply select items by clicking one, holding down the shift button, and then clicking another. While you have more than one item selected, you can right click to group things together. This makes it easier to move and resize different items as a unit or group. Finally, let me show you how to make any solid color background transparent. If I want to combine different images, I either need to use images with transparent backgrounds or know how to remove a background because right now this image's white background is hiding the other image behind it. In Google Images, you can use the search tools and select the color menu to try to filter for images with a transparent background, which is noted by a gray and white checkered background. A transparent background allows you to combine and layer images, and it is essential if you're not working on a white canvas like I am. However, if you can't find a version of an image that you like online with a transparent background, you can use an online editor called Pixlr to easily remove the background. First, copy the URL or address of the image you want to remove the background of. Then go to www.pixlr.com editor. Choose Open Image from URL and paste in the address you copied. Now double click the lock icon to unlock the background so we can make some changes. This is the magic wand tool. If you choose it and then click a color in your image, in this case, the white background, it will select the entire background. Now just hit the delete button on your toolbar. The white background will be erased and the gray and white checkered background means that the area of your image has been made transparent. Now save your image by choosing File, Save. Only certain image types support transparency, so use the drop-down menu to toggle to PNG Transparent. Title and save your image. Now go back to Google Drawings, use the Insert Image option to add your now transparent image to your infographic. This image will now layer nicely and look good on a non-white background. When you're done with your infographic and ready to link it to your digital poster, make sure to click the Share button and then Advanced. Change the sharing permissions from Private to anyone with the link can view. You can add your infographic to your digital poster either through this link or you can close the sharing window. And then you can go to the File menu and download your infographic as a JPEG or PNG image file that you would be able to upload to your project. 
And last but not least, to help you create your infographics, I have an infographics toolbox linked to the website. It has several commonly used icons or graphics. You can use these and apply files or colors as needed in your infographics. With carefully selected graphics and data, you can use Google Drawing to easily create a great infographic.